Hey friends, so last week we talked about rejection, how much it sucks, and we discussed 10 different ways that you can move past it so that you can move forward in your life without those old tapes playing over and over. Now, this week, we're going to talk about rejection again, but we're going to talk about the kind that I don't think gets nearly as much attention, self-rejection. This is a tough one, because as you know, as much as we l dislike other people judging and criticizing us, we are often far harder on ourselves in both of those departments than other people ever could be. I know I definitely have been guilty of this in the past. So you might be thinking, wait, you can reject yourself? Yes. Yes, you can. In fact, we're going to talk about 10 ways that you do just that, some of which you may not even realize is a self-rejection. Let's get right into it. Number one, not reaching for opportunities. Selling yourself short is a big way of rejecting yourself. You know how sometimes you will see a job opportunity that you are super qualified for. In fact, it's something you would consider yourself an expert at. And for a moment, you feel like you could snag this opportunity no problem, but then doubt creeps in. You feel like, yeah, you won't be the one chosen. So you talk yourself out of even trying, and you let it pass you right by. This is a prime example of self-rejection. You may have had some self-assuredness for a moment when you were first entertaining that opportunity, but instead of letting that, the confident part of you, go for it, Knowing that your chances were better than perhaps someone else's who didn't have your qualifications or experience, you gave in to that other voice. You know the one. The self-rejecting one. The voice of fear and doubt. And, you know, sometimes the voice of fear is really just your ego trying to protect you from getting hurt. You can't be too mad at that because that's your ego's job. But imagine you only ever listened to your ego-driven voice for making decisions. You'd never take a single risk or reach for anything higher than mediocre or safe. And is that really how you want to live? When an opportunity comes along and you know it's perfect for you and you can almost feel it in your gut, friends, don't reject yourself and your own abilities by letting it just slide right by, leaving you regretting that decision later. Tell your ego that it could sit this one out. You've got this. And go for it. Chances are high that you'll be glad that you did. Number two, not providing your input on a subject that you are very knowledgeable about. I will admit that I have definitely been guilty of this one. Basically, this means that you purposely do not take part in a discussion about a subject that you are very knowledgeable about or that you're passionate about because you feel like your contributions aren't as valuable as other people's. Listen, friends, there are a lot of people out here who are constantly talking about things that they think they know but actually don't. And just because they feel confident enough to open their mouths, we all have to hear about it. Meanwhile, there are plenty of times when people who actually do know the ins and outs of a subject but don't have that same confidence or bravado simply stay quiet. When you know your voice would positively contrib contribute to a conversation, don't be afraid to speak up. Don't let self-doubt tell you to shush. Knowledge is powerful, but it's even more powerful when it's shared. Because everyone benefits then. So stop letting your inner critic tell you that what you have to say isn't as important. Number three, constantly downplaying your successes thinking that making them a big deal will make other people dislike you or have contempt for you. Let me share a little-known pet peeve of mine. And no, it's not people who say library instead of library. I tell everyone that pet peeve. It's when I hear someone who I know has been wildly successful at something downplay that success by qualifying it with things like, well, I had a lot of help, or if it wasn't for this person, I wouldn't have that. Listen, it's always nice to remember where you came from and be grateful for that. It is also wonderful to thank the people who have helped you along in your journey. But remember who did the work, who put in the time and the effort and sacrifice and sleepless nights and whatever else you needed to do to get to where you are. It was you, and you deserve those accolades. Look at it this way. When a runner wins a race, they might be wearing running shoes that someone else bought them. They might have been inspired to race in the first place by a family member or a friend. But who gets the ribbon? The runner. 
because it was their own legs that got them across that finish line. Stop downplaying your successes because you think making them a big deal will make other people dislike you. First of all, there are always going to be people who do that anyway, probably because they are unhappy with something about their own lives. It is one thing to be humble about your success, but don't diminish it. You worked hard for it. Take the credit. Number four, always struggling with imposter syndrome. If you aren't familiar with it, imposter syndrome is basically when you believe that you are undeserving of your achievements and the high esteem that other people may hold you in. You feel like you aren't as competent or as intelligent as others may think, like everyone else around you knows what they're doing except you, hence the name imposter. And you have this fear that soon enough people are going to discover the truth about you. Hmm. Basically, imposter syndrome is a very deep form of self-doubt or even guilt over success that tends to happen in people who are high achievers. It's a complicated subject. There are many different types of it as well. Maybe we'll do a video or an article about that in the future. But anyway, if you have ever felt this way before, or if you feel this way often, you know that it can be difficult to deal with because you literally feel like you are not qualified to live your own life. That is a lot of self-doubt to carry around. Five, not shooting your shot and expressing interest in someone. Tell me if this sounds familiar. You meet someone and you feel an almost instant click. You aren't sure what it is, but you're definitely interested in knowing more. But instead of shooting your shot and trying to take that step, you bow to insecurity and decide not to, talking yourself completely out of it. Next thing you know, you convince yourself that they could never be interested in someone like you and you just give up. Now, listen, in the interest of full disclosure, this story is not just familiar to me, I lived it. In one specific case, talking myself out of expressing interest in someone sooner than I did was a decision that I regretted for quite some time, until a few years later, I got another shot. And when I did, I made sure that I didn't hesitate or second guess that one. I knew in my heart of hearts that it was a case of right person, wrong time. And this felt like it was the right time. Fast forward to today, and I am now happily married to that person. Shooting that shot was the best thing I've ever done, hands down. Now, look, obviously, you might not get a win every time you shoot a shot. That's just how life works. But you know what they say. You will absolutely miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. So find your confidence, and when something feels right, go for it. Even if it doesn't give you the results you want, at least you will have an answer or an outcome, which is much, much better than wondering what if. And who knows, maybe it will be a win, but you'll never know if you don't at least try. Number six, being afraid to share something cool or creative that you have done because you are scared of being mocked or criticism from others. This one makes me kind of sad, to be honest, because as a person who's worked in a creative field for over 25 years, I know, well, a lot of other creative people. And there have definitely been times when I have been in environments with other creatives and they have mentioned something cool that they did or worked on, but they seemed very shy to show other people. I had someone do this during a job interview, believe it or not. They were very, very hesitant to show me their portfolio of commercial art, even though com creating commercial art was literally the job. <laughs> The funny part is that when she did finally show it, her work was really, really good, and she got the job. Friends, opinions are pretty much the cheapest commodity on the planet. Everyone has a warehouse full of them, just ready to be unleashed upon whoever will listen. So the best way to deal with that is to not listen. There is always going to be someone who will criticize or try to undermine your accomplishments because that's just what some people do. Listen, everyone who has ever done anything great has had their fair share of detractors. Hell, even William Shakespeare had plenty of contemporaries who thought his work was sophomoric and the modern day equivalent of being a basic bitch. <laughs> Yet, he is not only the best-selling author of all time, he is also arguably one of the greatest and most influential writers that ever lived. I say arguably because some might not agree, but I certainly do, as you can see the theme on the shelves here behind me. 
If Shakespeare had listened to the people who mocked his writing, we would never have had Hamlet. If Prince let the people who booed him and threw literal garbage at him when he opened for the Rolling Stones in 1981 drive him out of the music business, we would have never had Purple Rain just three years later. So what I'm saying here is that when you do something cool or exceptional or that's a big accomplishment and you want to share it, don't let other people's noise stop you. Number seven, struggling to say no to things that you really need to say no to because you are afraid that people won't like you anymore. If you're a people pleaser or a giver, then you know this one all too well. If it's a challenge for you to say no to something that you really don't want to do without feeling anxious or bad or uncomfortable about it, then chances are you're carrying around some unhealthy responsibility for others. And you are definitely rejecting yourself in those scenarios and choosing them instead. Look, the truth is sometimes you just have to say no to people because saying yes puts you in a spot or makes things difficult for you or whatever the reason is. Those reasons don't have to be shared with a person, by the way. No is a complete sentence. But if people don't like you anymore because you said no to them about something, then it's highly, highly likely that that person probably didn't actually like you that much to begin with. And they're probably using you. So with this in mind, why care if they like you or not? Hell, you're better off if they don't because maybe then <laughs> they'll leave you alone. You don't need people who are only self-interested in your life anyway. Let them go use someone else because we assert our boundaries over here and only choose the people who choose us, right? Number eight, turning to major distractions or addictions to avoid feeling your feelings. We could probably do a whole video just about this one, but I'll sum it up by saying this. Feelings need to be felt. You cannot drink or drug them away. You cannot shop them away. You can't anything away, anything them away. If they could take a human form, they would be Glenn Close's character in Fatal Attraction yelling out, I will not be ignored, Dan, or you know, whatever your name is. Feelings need to be acknowledged and processed and dealt with. If you aren't doing that, they'll just get louder and more uncomfortable until you do. There's really not anything more that I think I can say to make that more clear. Number nine, always comparing yourself to others. There's a reason why people often repeat the phrase, comparison is the, fee the thief of joy, which is often attributed to Teddy Roosevelt, but nobody's actually sure if he coined that or what. Regardless of who did, though, it's been in the common vernacular for a metric poop ton of years because it is the absolute truth. It is so easy these days to get caught up in what this person is doing or what that person is doing because we have a million T social media platforms to look at and everyone shares bits and pieces of their lives. So when you see somebody who seems to have it all, it can be easy to look around and feel a little deflated when you don't have what they have. But something that you must keep in mind, one, you don't really know what happened behind the scenes for them to get there. When it comes to social media and the like, most people are showing only their highlight reel, not what didn't get past the cutting room floor. They're not posting about their struggles, only their victories. And you know what? That's actually okay. Because sometimes you're putting your dirty laundry out for the world to see creates some negative consequences that are out of your control. But either way, worrying about what other people are doing takes energy. And wouldn't that energy be better used working on your own goals and what you want to accomplish? Be inspired, but not comparative. And you'll see how much more productive one of those things is than the other. Anyone, everyone is running their own race, my friends. Some people are faster than you. Some people are slower than you. Some people are cheating and using a golf course, a golf cart to get ahead. Whatever their circumstances is not your circumstance. Keep your eyes on your own lane so that you don't trip and end up off the track somewhere in the bushes with kudzu around your ankles, okay? And number 10. Always moving the finish lines on your goals, no matter the size, because you're afraid you will not be able to meet them. 
I'm a big fan of setting goals. It gives structure and process and usually a timeline on when you're going to get something done. But there are times when we will set a very realistic goal and while we're trying to get there, we will shortchange ourselves by giving up the real prize at the end and settling for a smaller consolation prize. We do this because, well, we don't like to lose. And this is something that we often learn very young because the adults in our lives let us win often to help boost our self-esteem. While that is a noble sentiment, it doesn't really help us understand how to truly play the game. It doesn't prepare us to lose, which inevitably will happen. This is how, when, say, embarking on a diet, you initially proclaim, I want to lose 30 pounds by the end of the year, and I want to go to the gym four times a week. And you might do that for one week and eat all the salads, and then the next week, when reality comes knocking, you adjust that goal to 20 pounds and the gym twice a week. And then later, when you realize that discipline is hard, you do it again. And next thing you know, you're like, eh, I lost two pounds, good enough, and you drive right past the gym and right to McDonald's. There is nothing wrong with this scenario, in theory, right? You can certainly change your mind about things when you want to, but what you might not realize is that you moved that goalpost for a reason because it was difficult and you were afraid that you wouldn't get there. Which, yes, saves you from being disappointed, but does it do anything else that's positive? It sure doesn't help you lose the weight, that's for sure. And it doesn't give you that big boost of serotonin that you get when you set a goal and then you smash it. When you win, even if it's a small victory, you get inspired to do it again. And that's how sometimes a very big undertaking gets done. Persistence. But if you only listen to your inner critic, who is going to try to talk you out of things because it doesn't want you to be disappointed, then you will keep shortchanging yourself unnecessarily. How do you know you can't do something if you don't even try? You don't. So stop moving those goalposts into what is ultimately a hollow victory zone and start putting yourself to task on your real end goals. I promise you that not only is that way better for your self-confidence and your self-esteem, but it will give you the courage to keep trying and not give up on yourself. Because if you don't even believe that you can do it, well then how the hell is anyone else supposed to? So there you have it, friends, 10 ways that you reject yourself. I hope that you found this information useful. And if you take away just one thing from this video, I sincerely hope it's this. Life is going to hand you plenty of disappointments and rejections and throw roadblocks in your path. You have to make sure that your own limiting beliefs are not the biggest ones. That's all I've got for you this week. I'll be back next week with another priority message. Until then, take good care of yourselves. Bye.